let's assume I got this economic theory, and I see a guy, and he's not on his demand curve. He's off his demand curve. And the question is, is that a big deal, little deal, whatever? Or should I be really bothered as an economist that this guy's pushed off his demand curve a little bit? I should be? Why? Okay. Okay. Okay, so let's assume I see this guy. How much effort should he make to try to make sure he's on his demand curve? Well, look at this picture. In this picture, how much effort should he make to make sure he's on his demand curve? Not a lot. Depends, though. Depends on what, what his alternative was. If he's off his demand curve this direction, I would say I'm not very worried. I would, in fact, think people's demand curves ought to be pretty fat looked at this way, because there's not that much incentive to get your decision exactly right. So if he's trying to figure out whether this thing is real, tastes real good or just tastes kind of good, whether he's really trying to figure out whether he should get the hot dog or the hamburger, you know, he shouldn't spend a whole lot of time trying to figure that out. Because on the margin, there's not that much incentive to get it exactly right. We would expect people to be pretty open to, to suggestions, for example, when people ask them, hey, maybe you should try this. Well, OK, fine. As long as it's not too far away from what I want, I, I'm not going to resist it very much. Or if I'm in the supermarket and I say, you know, don't, I'm not going to offer all the products. I'll offer some. And I'll choose for you. And as long as I choose pretty close to what you want, you may be willing to cede me that right for a very small payment. If I give you a nickel, you might say, OK, fine, I'll let you choose. Now, on the other hand, if I could have been here, right? If I could have been here, and instead I was here, the cost to me of that is high, right? Because then my loss is like this entire rectangle, right? That is, my loss of getting pushed vertically, of paying more for what I wanted to buy, is much higher than my cost of being pushed horizontally. So while the, at the same time, I may let that supermarket influence my decision as to whether I'm going to buy Coke or Pepsi or buy you know, one kind of laundry detergent or another, I might not care if I'm getting pushed horizontally back and forth. I do care a lot about going to a supermarket that charges me more than the other one. So I might shop real intensively on price, and then when I get in the supermarket, just throw crap in my cart, right? That's kind of what this model says, right? I'm like really focused on getting the best price, but once I get to the store, I kind of, eh, I'm close enough, right? That's, that's what economics predicts. And that's why, I mean, there's this book, Nudge, by sort of Thaler and, and Sustein, Sunstein, and it seemed to me that you would have started with this example, right? You should have started with this and said, look, I expect us to be able to nudge people around. That is, there, there's very little reason not to let people nudge you around. There's very little reason not to let them push you a little way this way or that way when it comes to deciding what to buy. It's, it's low cost. I wouldn't expect people. I expect people to be perfectly informed. Are they going to figure out whether their true demand curve is here or their true demand curve is there? The answer is no. There's not much incentive to figure out where your true demand curve is because there's very little loss from being wrong. Right? You don't want to make gross errors. On the other hand, the gain to getting your decisions exactly right isn't so great. So that's an important point. Yeah. Sure. I'm just saying because he's not really learning exactly what his demand curve is, right? I go into this store. I don't really know exactly how good this good is, right? I don't, you know, I don't know how nutritious it is. I kind of know, but I don't know exactly. And if I knew more about the good, I could make a better decision. 
The answer is the gain to knowing exactly how good it is isn't very high. Right. I would love it to be better. If the good was better, I'm much better off. But that's not my choice. The good quality, the actual quality of the good is fixed. Then the question is, is how much, how well do I know how good it is? And the answer is, I'm not going to get very precise. Because the cost to me of not knowing is pretty low. Okay? So we would expect people to run around as very imperfect decision makers. That's, or at least somewhat imperfect decision makers. That's a prediction of economics. It's not, a, you know, people, often people take this as like, oh, that's why economics is wrong. In fact, it's the other way around. That's what economics says people should do. That's how people should be. Okay? All right. This is a long-winded answer to you.